Bina Lakshmi Nepram joins us. She's a well-known peace activist. She's the convener for the Northeast Women's Peace Initiative. She's from the Maiti community herself, and we've been trying to get you voices from both communities to best understand a conflict that not many of us outside of the Northeast understand. Bina, uh, let me start by actually just asking you, how are you? You know, I had I had another uh, guest on yesterday, and I just feel like in all this talk of politics, we forget that there are real people and real lives involved. So how are you doing? Barkha, that's, that's the most heartwarming question that we have ever been heard, asked since 3rd of May. Our hearts are broken. We are just barely holding on, Barkha. What we are seeing in Manipur is just not... Um, a fight between two communities, but because these two communities have been living together for so many centuries and I have friends. I had cookie women who were my teachers. I have some of our best friends are cookies. So we are absolutely heartbroken for the last several weeks and there seems to be no end in sight. So thank you again. It's so important to take care of each other Beyond the politics, it's the hand holding, the heart holding, not just between Kuki and Mete women, but women across the country, women across who care that our societies should be able to have peace and normalcy. So we are heartbroken, but we are standing strong and resolute as women because we know that if we break, society will not be able to revive back. So we are holding on, Barka. We are just holding on. Bina, when I hear you, I hear the broken heart. You know, I see it in these images. We see it in the tears of these women. We see it in, in, in we, you know, even without words, we see it, we feel it, we hear it. But if I, if I were to go back to you for a moment and ask you, you know, do you feel, what's the one word you'd use? You know, I know you're close even at this point to tears because you describe a broken heart. Yeah. What's that one word you'd use to describe your, your emotion? Is it fear? Is it cynicism? I think not just me, but 3.3 billion people in Manipur, we feel completely abandoned by India. Completely abandoned. Because for the last 40, 48 days now, how can you let these violence continued with the fourth largest army in the world? This is the question that every cookie, every Maite, every community, and by the way, I always identify myself as a human being who happened to be born in Manipur. The love that I have for Manipur is not just because I was born to Maite parents. I've always identified myself as a human born in the state, the beautiful state of Manipur. So right now, Manipuris feel completely abandoned by, by the country. We've had the Supreme Court today um, refuse to urgently intervene uh, in the state. This was in response to petition by the Kuki uh, community. And they said this is an issue of law and order. The state must handle it. Many people across communities are now asking for president's rule. They see the chief minister's failure to control law and order uh, as now part of the problem. The chief minister is no longer necessarily seen as part of the solution. How do you, how do you see these demands for president's rule? Barkha, you know that our honorable president of our country, and we are so proud to have a tribal president of our country, but she's just a figurehead. Hmm. The people who will power in Delhi, Barka, you and I know who they are. And it is incumbent upon those decision makers that they ensure that peace returns to Manipur. I doubt that even a president's rule can bring about peace and normalcy. There's a complete power vacuum. There's a complete abandonment of decision making. This is, this is a complete sort of absolutely thrown to the wind, to the wind, our people, and we have no idea why they are doing it. But we are acutely aware that next year is general elections. And the silence of our prime minister stuns us, Barka. How could, how could he com completely don't even utter a word? So this is what is astounding. So not even a president's rule. 
in my opinion, can bring about peace and normalcy in that state. So we are at the loss of ideas as to what must be done. It is dependent on those decision makers in Delhi, and you and I know who they are, that they do all in their power to make peace return back to Manipur. You know, whether I speak to uh, the Methi community or the Kuki community, women in particular are saying the prime minister must speak. Why is it so important to the people? For, I mean, I, I know it's a, it sounds like a uh, like a silly question, but I think the audience needs to understand why every day somebody from Manipur comes on our platform and says we want the prime minister to speak. The government will turn around and say. We sent the Home Minister. We've announced a judicial probe. Why is it so important for the people of Manipur to hear from Prime Minister Modi at this hour? That's, I will answer it in a, in a seminal way, Barkha. Yes, every one of us have been asking that the Prime Minister's silence is deafening. And the reason is because he is the Prime Minister of India. He is not just a Prime Minister of Gujarat. He is a prime minister of Manipur too. And as a head of a nation, the head of a nation has a responsibility that if a part of the country is in turmoil, a turmoil that we have never seen in the history of Manipur, where there is a violence of the most horrific atrocities committed, and no one is able to do anything after even spending the Indian army chief in spite of the Home Minister being there, the violence sort of increased. So the only way the people of both the communities are responding is, why is the head of our nation keeping quiet about this? Sometimes it's also just a word of support, which is important and critical. It's as you mentioned, how are you, you ask? We wanted the Prime Minister to come and say, how are the people of Manipur? And he has not even said this. And this is the reason why his silence is what is deafening and the feeling of being abandonment that we are feeling at this moment. It's an epitome. Talk a little bit about you opened by saying you have had teachers who are from, you know, yes. uh, from, from, the, from a different community, how there have been friendships across the Methi and Kuki community, how this separation that exists today has not always been the case. How did it come to be that the Metis look at the, or, or the leadership of the Metis is calling the Kuki community insurgents, anti-national militants, and the Kukis are basically saying the Metis are coming into our land, they're taking our land if we have arms is to defend ourselves. Do you believe that this began with the court judgment that wanted to give tribal status to the Methi community, to your community, or do you believe there's something deeper than the court order? Yes. Barkha, there is something deeper than the court order. Uh, the reason that I say is this, and I would like to take your viewers to understanding that the Northeast of India is home to about 272 indigenous groups. And Manipur has about 34 plus indigenous communities and other communities living. It's like a mini India where there are multiple religion, multiple. Manipur doesn't even consist of just no, uh, cookies and maitis alone. It has several other beautiful groups who have been in coexistence for a long time. And in my research and writing and work at the, in the field, we realize that over the past 30 to 40 years, because of an ongoing uh, you know, insurgency in the Northeast of India, what has happened is the weaponization of our identities happening in since 1990s, Barka, which means that Government of India, when it was trying to subdue some of the bigger armed groups, they started arming and training smaller ethnic groups, which also included the Kuki community and also so many other smaller groups. As a result, it's like trying to fight fire with, not with water to douse the fire in the Northeast because nation building has to be done, I believe, with a lot of love and not at gunpoint and government of India was not able to do good governance and rather they tried to subdue the violence in Manipur by bringing in more, arming more ethnic groups. As a result, Barka, since the 1990s, there has been what I call a war against the war phenomena happening in Manipur alone. I've done extensive research in JNU on this. Mm 